like to sing about the beauty and the romance of the old West. But there's a West you might not know about, just coming out in dude season. That's the workaday range country, busy making your beefsteaks and your lamb chops. There are two facts of life out here. One's grass, the other's water. There's no prettier water in the world than you'll find in the range country, coming down out of mountain snow. But there isn't always enough of it, and it isn't always in the right places. The idea is to get the grass and the water together where the cattle and sheep can use them. If nature doesn't provide, the rancher has to. We've been building a good bunch of water. Graham gave us a lift. Lots of places there's water underground, too. And with a little help from the range program, we put in windmills and watering tanks. When you got water, you can spread your stock and use all the grass. Not just wear out the best rains close around the water holes and ruin it with erosion. You get more beef when the cows don't walk it all off going 10 miles to get a drink. You get more beef on the herd when the grass is good. One of the things we're doing in the range program is to plow contour furrows across the slopes to make the rain soak in so the grass gets all the good of it. It's good grass and water that puts the beef on the scale, and it's pounds of beef over the scale that pay off. Naturally, we're looking for the kinds of grass that do best for us. And one new kind the range program has helped introduce is crested wheat grass. There are other kinds adapted to various parts of the range country, too. They hold the soil. They're good for grazing. Some of them, like crested wheatgrass, are good for hay. I don't suppose Hollywood ever showed you a cow hen putting up hay, but we do it. We've even got it mechanized. Maybe the song says the skies are not cloudy all day, but the range country does get some mighty rough weather. And if you want a good calf crop and the beef poundage coming off the ranch every season, you don't just let the cows rustle through the winter. No, you feed them. Every stack of hay on the place is just like another insurance policy. If you read some of the storybooks, you'd think Bob Wireplum ruined the range country. Fact of the matter is, a good part of our job is keeping fences up in shape. You see, we're using Bob Wire to make the range country better. We keep the cattle off a different piece of it each year until the grass has made its seed and gotten a new start. Deferred grazing, we call it in the range program. Along with proper stocking, it's putting new life into a lot of ranges. Good grass and water mean more lambs and wool, too. Sheep herding on the range is a hard, lonely life. Living in a wagon all season, keeping the flock moving along to grass and water, bringing them up to the shearing floor with thick fleeces to help keep the world warm. That's all part of the year's work in the range country, though, and our folks know their job. They're working harder now because so many things from the range country help win the war. Wool and mutton, beef and leather. We have to work harder. We're losing some of our hands, too, along with the rest of the country. You don't make a top cow hand in a month. No, nor in a year, either. You sure hate to see one leaving, but Uncle Sam's got first call on him. So we just look around for what help we can find. There's John Stans in Timber now. A little old for the warpath, maybe, but he's come down off the reservation to make a roundup hand. It takes a lot of hands at Roundup, too. Out at daybreak, breakfast at the chuck wagon, and then get the horses in. Get a rope on the first pony in your string, 
and saddle up for the morning's work. Man's got to be able to take it all day, but he'll wear out a couple of horses. Oh, oh, he must have heard me. The boys have got to hunt all the draws and canyons for the cattle and get them bunched so they can rope and brand the calves. down. Hold still, youngster, and you'll soon be back with Mama. You don't want to be a maverick, do you? A touch of the branding iron. Here's your shot of blackleg vaccine to keep you frisky. And off you go. Full-fledged quarter circle you. Yes, sir. Here's your beefsteak starting to you from out here in the range country. Good grass and water, and a lot of work and worry. Don't you forget it, have gone to make that beef. Here they come, the range country's contribution to feeding you and our fighting men and our working men. Food for freedom. Good, lean grass beef, not fattened and finished yet into prime, but good stuff. The Army buys a lot of it just this way. The Middle West takes a lot of cattle to finish with corn and alfalfa in the feedlots. And then you've got as good beef as there is in the world, part of the meat supply that makes America strong. Steaks and roasts. Short ribs for these chaps building liberty ships. They're a long way from the range country, but our meat's helping them slam the ships together to slam the hell out of Hitler. If we can't turn out the meat fast enough to keep the army fed and our friends fed, and still put just the cut you'd like on your table every day, too? Well, I guess you and I won't mind for a while to pass up a sizzling steak now and then in favor of sending plenty of good red meat to the lads in the tanks. A man wants regular rations for that work. Or coming down in parachutes behind enemy lines somewhere, maybe. There'll be enough meat to go around. It's just that the boys with the hardest jobs ought to have first call. I'll tell you one thing. Our boys out here on the range that raise the cattle and the fellas that feed them, too. We aren't much used to Hitler's kind of talk. We don't aim to get used to it, either. We've been brought up to believe one man's as good as another, and Americans just as good as they come. Anyone that says different had better be ready to back his play. We're backing off.